Now, how quickly can you get seen by your GP? It's not easy, is it? But 37,000 people are missing their GP slots every day, and it's costing the NHS a huge £1.4 million a day. Some are calling for fines for missed appointments. Is that the right approach? Joining me to discuss this is Stephen Dorrell, former chair of the NHS Confederation and former health secretary. Stephen, it's always a pleasure to see you. Um, so these new figures uh, showing almost five million slots have been recorded as did not attend this year alone. It's a dreadful waste. Everyone agrees with that. What do you think is going on? Well, I think it's it, they're shocking figures, aren't they? And it is a form of selfishness to book a GP appointment and then not show up. Uh, and so I, I think what's going on is probably that it's partly uh, that it is difficult, too difficult, too often to get to see a GP or to get the, the kind of support that people need out of primary care. And what we need to be doing clearly is improving access to primary care so that people can get immediate access to somebody who can deliver the advice that the individual needs that isn't always, in truth, a GP. Give us, um, give us an idea of who, who might perform that role. Well, uh, one of the most obvious examples is high street pharmacy. Uh, one of the things the health service has done for many years is to train pharmacists on uh, the delivery of medicines. And that doesn't mean that pharmacists ought to be uh, able to write prescriptions for all forms of medicines. Uh, but very often, uh, there are, uh, the, the pharmacist will actually have sufficient knowledge to be able to give completely safe, uh, a proper uh, medical advice. So pharmacy is one example. Another example actually is using remote consultation uh, methods that we've grown used to during the pandemic. That doesn't mean that it's a replacement uh, for face-to-face -face, uh, meeting with a GP or with a nurse or uh, another health professional, but it's simply another form of access. I think we need to get used to the idea uh, that there are different ways of getting access uh, to primary care and there are different professionals working in primary care and we ought to move away from the idea that the only way of getting authoritative primary care is to sit in front of a GP. For people who don't show up, who don't give notice that they can't attend their scheduled GP appointment, should they be subject to a small fine? I'm not really in favour of that. I think the administration that's involved in collecting that and having the argument, and uh, it creates a different type of relationship between the health service and uh, each of us as citizens. So I'm not really in favour of going down that road. What I am absolutely in favour of is the health service thinking radically about how to improve access. The point about the National Health Service is supposed to be that it provides access to qualified care at the moment that you need it without asking whether you can afford to pay for it. And that's the principle I think we should stick with, but we should think of new ways of applying that in the world of the 21st century. The number of qualified doctors is falling. That's despite the fact that the government manifesto promise uh, promised 6,000 more GPs by 2024. That's got to be part of the problem, hasn't it? That's uh, certainly an element of the problem, yes. But the, 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 the other aspect of this is to ask how the health service and the system we, as we operate at the moment, how efficiently do we use the time of the GPs that we have? Because when we use that time inefficiently, and the extreme example, of course, is when somebody doesn't show up. But also uh, when a GP's time is used to do things that don't actually require five years at medical school to be able to do them safely, uh, then we're wasting the resource of GP. So, yes, of course, we need to ensure that we've got uh, a full supply of, of uh, job opportunities for people. Uh, but we also need to ensure that when we've got them, we use their time effectively to deliver proper care to the patients who need access to them. Final question, and I'm going to um, change the subject to get some historical insight from you on politics and where we are why today. You, you, why do you always think I do history, Gloria? You witnessed that 97 Blair landslide. 
Do yeah, you see any parallels Probably between that. what happened back then in the run-up to that and, and what's happening to the Conservative Party today? Well, as you probably know, I'm sure you do know, I'm no longer a Conservative. I left the Conservative Party in 2019 after 49 years. Uh, but I, I do think that the government, that the Prime Minister and those who remain in the Conservative Party need to think very carefully about the, the way in which they're losing trust, not just in themselves as individuals and in the Conservative Party, but in the, uh, our democratic institutions. I think it's, a most it's the most elementary principle of all that those who make the law should live by the law. I can't think of a simpler way of putting it. If you were a betting man, do you think Boris Johnson will lead the Conservative Party into the next election? I can only say I hope not. Stephen Dorrell, it's always a pleasure to chat to you. Thank you for your time today.